for this year's day your father had made you sanctified it advice and just sit here for a moment as we share this powerful word with you that will enrich your life, that will bless your life and bring favor upon your life. Today we're going to illuminate for your understanding the benefits and perks of righteous living. The benefits of living righteously. Not only will it improve your character, but it will release favor unto you, even from the most unlikely sources. But if you will indulge me for a few minutes before I, I dive into the lesson, I just want to recap our uh, lesson from week before last. As you know, that on last week we all were celebrating the Passover, uh, the resurrection time. Some people call it Easter celebration, but we call it the Passover and the resurrection. And I gave you, I gave you my word. I'm not going to be long in uh, this overview. I'm going to give you a synoptic overview. I mean, it's going to be a brief and abbreviated. <laughs> During our lesson, our last lesson, we shared the four stages of the psychological maturation process of the human species, from infancy all the way up to adulthood. And we pinpointed where wickedness became prevalent in the stages of most, of, of most lives. And it would be a place where one would least expect at a stage. And of course, I told you this is a synoptic overview, so I can't give you all of the details of all of the main points we made on last week. So let me just suggest you visit our YouTube channel, and that's the Touch of Grace Ministries YouTube channel, and there you'll be able to pick up on the series, and it will bring you up today. So we want to move right along, okay? We don't want to get stuck in the past, or we'll never get to where we're going. Mm, I think I said something there. <laughs> Don't get stuck in the past or you'll never get to where you're going. So we shared the fourth psychological maturation process in the human uh, species. And in, in addition, we, um, we shared the objective of the plan of salvation, which is designed to save humanity from imminent destruction. And we'll find that um, in John 3, 16, y'all know it's a very popular passage of scripture in the Bible. It said, for Yahweh so loved the world that he gave 
his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall have everlasting life. Oh, that's good news. That's good news. He came to save us from a life of sin. You know, prior to that, you know, man was having a very difficult time in measuring up to the commandments of Yahweh because in the flesh he just had, man had no control. And in his flesh, he could not measure up. So the father said, well, let me send, send my son to be an example. So not only was he an example where he showed us, he even taught us how. He said, and he told, told us how that we can control this thing. He said, if you walk, not after the flesh, <laughs> but after the spirit. That's what we have to do. We can't walk after this flesh because you know, you know what the flesh is saying to you. The flesh is about pleasing flesh. And we know, and like scripture say, in flesh dwells no good thing. <laughs> no, 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 no. But that's not where we're trying to go on today. So are we talking about uh, 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 this thing of righteousness? What is righteousness? It's simple. It's just doing right by people. Doing right by yourself. And it's about pleasing the Father. So once we make the confession, Father, I, I, I believe in my heart, you know, that you had uh, sent your son. I believe in, in, in my heart that he had rose from the dead, that he is the resurrection. I, I believe in my heart that he came to save the people from their sin. Yes, I believe. So after the confession, so why is it that we need sanctification? No. Oh. I'm glad to ask. Because going from my lesson from a, a week and a half ago, the reason we went through the psychological maturation process of the human species is because we wanted to show you where wickedness began. The stage where it began. And so when you think about the time from toddler all the way up to being a grown adult, we picked up some stuff. All of us didn't come from a holy home that was the, with the saved background. No, all of us didn't come from there. We had some parents that wasn't saved. We had some, some we had single parents and they were doing everything under the sun. There was no righteousness in their lifestyle. So a lot of us have picked up a lot of bad habits. So now what happened now that we have confessed that he is Lord, we have confessed that he is the resurrection. We have confessed that he comes to save us from our sin. Well, then the next step for us to do is that we have to be transformed. What is it that we have to transform, Satan? The scriptures say we have to have a mind like that of the Messiah. We have to have that type of mindset. So therefore, what we have to do, you know the scripture, let this mind be in you that is also in the Messiah, Yeshua the Messiah. So our mind needs to be transformed, our mind, because in our mind controls our character, our spirit. Most of us are in dire, dire need of a behavior change, some management. Yes, we need because some of us got some stuff with us, stuff that we picked up. And so what happens now, the father said, look, you have to be like me. You have to think like me. You know, you have to be, you have to walk as I walk. So now what we have to do is take all of that toxic stuff that you picked up ever since you was an infant and we got to discard or we're going to have to get rid of it. We have to extract it out of your mind, out of your spirit, out of your soul. So that's why you need sanctification. 
Sanctification is about cleaning you up from the toxic things in your life. Starting with our behavior. A lot of us have a toxic behavior. We don't think so. Do you think now that you've given yourself to, to, to the Lord that, that you can keep the same mindset that you have? You think you can still treat people the way you've treated them? Some of y'all some nasty people. I mean, I see folks now that claim to be saved and sanctified, and their attitude stinks. And I'm saying to myself, are you supposed to be representing the kingdom? With an attitude like that, that is not kingdom love. That is not kingdom attitude. So what is kingdom attitude? Galatians chapter number 5, verse 22 uh, through 23, it tells you about the fruit of the Spirit. You say you of him, you of Yahweh, then you ought to show some signs. Your behavior needs to reflect where we become righteous. Not meaning that we're better than anybody else. What it means is that we treat people right. We treat one another right. We are not to offend our brothers and sisters. We are not to offend the Holy Spirit. So we have to please the Father. And then we have to make sure that we're not offending anyone else. And we can include ourselves in that. A lot of us offend our own self. We put our own self in harm's way because of our stink attitude. But praise be to our Father for the word of Yahweh. For it's a book of reformation. And it's a guide that's going to help us get the toxic things out of our life. Now you're with me, don't go nowhere. I'm, I'm almost done, I'm almost done. The plan of salvation is packaged with repentance, sanctification. And we shared a moment ago, why, why do we have to be sanctified? It's because we have to have a behavior, attitude adjustment. Through and by the word of Yahweh, the Holy Scripture, the book that I, I refer to as the book of God and the Reformation, I said that you, with, with you that you cannot jump into being holy without going through a, 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 a change, a transformation, ridding yourself of the toxic stuff. And let's be clear. Being righteous has nothing to do with being holy. It just brings you a step closer. And we're going to get through that in our, in our next lesson. In our next lesson. There's a difference between sanctification, being sanctified, and, and holiness. There's a big difference. Because you live a life of righteousness doesn't mean that you're holy. Okay? When you live a life of righteousness, that means, okay, I treat everybody right. I treat everybody as I want to be treated. I treat everybody as the Bible requires me. So what I want you to do is I want you to go to Galatians chapter number 5. You don't have to do it today, but do it on your study time. I'll read it. Let's, let's go there just for a moment so we can read it. So I want you to on your own to study them galatians chapter number five let me read i'm going to start from because i want to talk about the works of the flesh just in case you don't know what the works of the flesh i'm going to, want to talk about that before the uh, before i talk about the fruit First number 16, beginning chapter number 5. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let me say that again. Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill 
the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. You can't do both of them. It's contrary. Either you're going to do good or you're going to do the opposite. Listen to this. But if you're led by of the Spirit, you are not un under the law. Why is that? Well, if you're led by the Spirit, you're going to do no wrong. There is no condemnation to them who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. If you're walking in the spirit, then you won't find yourself doing anything wrong. So the law won't be even applied to you. Let me give you an example. I drive my car. When I drive my car, and as long as the light is, as long, long as the light is green, I can move forward. But if that light turned red, and I'm still driving through the light, then I broke the law. So then the law does affect me. The law does condemn me. But as long as I abide by the law, you get what I'm saying? If I'm not breaking, if I don't run through that red light, then the police can't stop me. You get me? Now the works of the flesh are, I'm at verse number 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. Now check this out. These are the works of the flesh. They don't get upset with me when I read this category, when I read this list. It's in the Bible. The works of the flesh, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, various emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. I didn't see that. That's in the word. The list that I just read, if you, if you partake in these things, guess what? You're not going to inherit the kingdom. The Father don't want you up there. In that way, hmm. But now I want to share with you the fruits of the Spirit. Here, we, beginning at verse number 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, no, the Spirit is capital letter, which means we talk about the Spirit of Yahweh. The fruit of the Spirit, he could, remember I tell you, we have to be like Him. Let this mind be in you like that was in, uh, uh, in Yeshua and His Father in the kingdom. Because you know the Son and the Father, they are one. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. In other words, doing good, you can't break the law doing good. Having patience. You haven't offended anybody by having the patience. As a matter of fact, you did them a favor. Whenever you have patience with people that, 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 that's not in the place where they should be. But you have patience and you're still dealing with them, trying to help them along the way. Gentleness. Some of y'all some rough Christians. Oh, by my, my God. Hard on a brother. You're hard on a, on a sister. You have to have patience while they're going through this process. For well, something doesn't happen overnight. So you have to be patient with them. Just be gentle with them. I'm not saying sugarcoat stuff. But what I'm saying is to be wise in sharing the good news you know, so they can follow in the way. If you beat them up, who want to be around somebody that's going to beat them up all the time? So first number 25, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Y'all hear me? If you live... In the spirit, then we need to walk in the spirit. Let me get back to my commentary. 
by adhering to the words that are given in this book, it will change your character in nature. Oh, my Lord. I'm a witness. Yes, it will change you if you adhere to these words applied to your life. Then it will change your character in nature. That's why you hear a lot of people give the testimony, the things I used to do. I don't do them anymore. Why? Because I've been transformed. I've been changed. I've been sanctified. I've been cleaning up the places I used to go. I don't, that I shouldn't be. I don't go to those places anymore. Because my mind has been transformed. My spirit has been transformed. The the Reformation Initiative, I'm talking about the word of God, Yahweh. If it's applied to your life, it will liberate you out of an old, sinful, and contrite lifestyle and reconcile you back to your original state that Yahweh has created you to be where he delighted in you. <laughs> Y'all know how it is when we see the newborn baby. we like, oh, they're so beautiful. They are so cute, so innocent. That's the way the Father has created us to be. When he created Adam, Adam was innocent. There was no sin in Adam. There was no wrongdoing in Adam. And that's what the Father come to do, is to reconcile us back to him and to that place where he was delight in us. That's a beauty of righteous living. Of righteousness because it restores you back to that place where the Father is delighted in you. Tell somebody the beauty of righteousness. Now we've entered stage two into, into the process of sanctification. And uh, remember, you're not righteous yet. You're just in the process of being sanctified. In other words, you're in the process of being cleaned up. You're in the process of being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Get rid of all of that toxic stuff in your mind and replace it with good. That's where we are. That's where we are. So now that we have confessed and we have accepted the Lord in our life, we are no longer a slave to sin, but we made it a 180 degree turn, about face reversal to the direction, to the angle that point us in the direction of the path that leads to the light of salvation, away from the darkness. Remember what is salvation? Salvation is that very source that's gonna keep you from destruction. <laughs> it's going to be the source that's going to save you from hell. Something I said, well, I don't believe in hell. Well, how about the fiery furnace? Because the Bible does mention the fiery furnace. Depends on what translation that you're reading. But every translation mentioned about that furnace, right? <laughs> So I want to remind my brothers and sisters, every boy and girl, that when you confess the Savior, you make the confession through repentance, do know that the confession and repentance does not sanctify you. How many times we seen people that came to the altar, gave themselves to the Lord, and even got baptized in the name, but they went down a dry devil and came up a wet one. A transformation has to take place in the mind. There has to be a cleansing. So confession and repenting, <laughs> it doesn't sanctify you. Tell you, tell somebody sitting next to you, to you, tell them they need to be saved. You need to be sanctified. When we decide to come on this side, is that we now become practitioners of righteous living because now what we're doing is 
getting rid of the bad habits and replace them with good ones. And so for some of us, it's going to be a seesaw battle. You're up the day and down the mar. It's okay. That's natural. It's okay. No, you're not a hypocrite if you're wrestling with your flesh. If you confess to be a Christian and you're wrestling with yourself, but you, you but you try and you put forth an effort, doesn't mean that you're a hypocrite. Being a hypocrite means that if you fall, you don't have a conscious mind about it. You can care less. But when it bothers you, and you say, okay, Father, I'm going to try this again. And but let me tell you sometimes how the enemy is. The enemy can be very tricky. Because sometimes we get to a point and to a place where we say, Father, I just get so tired of letting you down. It seems like I mess up every time. Remember the time when the scriptures, one of the disciples asked Yeshua, you said, you sure, teacher, how often must we forgive our brethren? Hmm. It wasn't one. It wasn't one. No, you sure with them, his response was, no, it wasn't one time. It wasn't two times. It wasn't three times. He said 70 times seven a day. Could you imagine <laughs> that every time somebody do something to you, if they do, if they do something wrong to you ten times a day and they ask for forgiveness, oh, we have to forgive them. Could you imagine those numbers? So if he's telling you 70 times seven a day, it doesn't matter as long as you keep trying. If you fall, it's okay, Father, forgive me. The Father must forgive you. If he's going to tell us 70 times seven, what do you think he's going to do? He said, oh, my grace is sufficient. So don't let the enemy talk to you because you fall. Let me tell you something, Revelation 21 and verse 7. Let's go there because you must know that you got to stay in the race. You have to keep fighting until you overcome. Revelation, let's go there right quick. I want to encourage your hearts, those who are struggling in this walk. Chapter 21, verse number 7. Here John shares the vision what the Father had told him, the prophecy. John said, he that overcometh, overcome what? Overcome this world, the sinful nature of this world. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his Elohim. This is what God, this is what Yahweh is speaking to John there at the Alapadmas. He said, if you overcome, he said, I'm going to be your Elohim. I'm going to be your, your everything. I'm going to be your capital G-O-D. And you will be my son, you will be my daughter, but you have to overcome. So that means that let you know already that there's going to be a struggle. Huh. Donna McClurkin had a song that was, you know, people debated on it, but they didn't understand the very nature of the lyrical contents. Donnie said, we fall down but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. And then he just let everybody on. Uh, no, no, we who are walking in the way, we who identify ourselves as Christians, we'll know better than you. We'll just a uh, sinner saved by grace. So you must understand that, yes, there's going to be a wrestling, but guess what? If you keep practicing something, keep practicing something by having, guess what? Sooner or later, you're going to get that thing right. You're going to get that thing right. So if you're struggling, keep fighting. Keep standing. <laughs> keep fighting. 
keep standing. Keep getting up. It's so good to know that we have a father who will be there when we fall. All we have to do is say, Father, I'm sorry I sinned against you. Forgive me. Just that simple. And then you keep fighting. You keep fighting to the point where you overcome this flesh. So that's what sanctification is all about. Righteousness, all oh, righteousness is about treating everybody right. About treating yourself right. That's what it's all about. Holiness is another thing, and we're going to share that in our next series. Because the Bible says without holiness, no man is going to see the Lord. For every man that is holy must be righteous. Ah, can you be a holy without being righteous? Can you be righteous without being holy? Oh, we're going to find out in our next series. Let's conclude this. Righteous living not only position you in a place to receive salvation. Hear me clearly. Listen. When you walk in kingdom principles and take on the very nature of, of the kingdom of God, the very nature of the character of Yahweh. See, the thing it is, we're made in his image and we're made in his likeness, but not in his character. We have to be transformed <laughs> so we can think like him, walk like him, talk like him. It's a learned behavior we have to, we have to, we have to take upon ourselves, become practitioners. And when you walk in his word, when you walk in his character, his word empowers and enables you to get the best result out of every situation. I don't care what confronts you, it will turn around for your good. Now, there's a, a plethora of illustrations and scenarios I could elaborate on, but I believe this one right here is sufficient. Listen, watch this. Whenever the emotion of anger is triggered, the results are never good. So this is the time when we really need self-control. When our emotion of anger had been triggered, most of us were in the, you know, when you hit that nerve, most of us are like, we like out of control. Or we go there because it's our very nature. But how many times that when we go there, all we do is it cause more harm for ourselves. And that's why one of the components of the fruit of the Spirit is we have to be patient and we have to love. Self-control, we have to have self-control. Because the enemy know what ticks you off. The enemy know what triggers that, that, that nerve. He knows it. And every now and then he's going to try you. And most of us succumb to it, too. We go there. And that's where many of us lose favor and lose our blessings. But Yahweh's given us already the remedy. So when that, that, when that comes against us, we also know the Bible tells us, say, look, you, you, when somebody come up against you like that, you see that things are getting out of hand, out of control. The Bible says release kind words because kind words turn away wrath. Are you wondering why you didn't get that pay raise? Are you wondering why, why you didn't get that promotion? Yes, you do outstanding work and uh, you do proficient. You're proficient in your craft. Can't nobody do it like you can do, but still you get overlooked for that promotion. You still uh, don't get that pay raise. And you're wondering why. Some of you say, oh, my supervisor just don't like me. Well, I'm going to tell you the truth. 
Yeah, you know how to do the work, and you're very good, but your attitude sucks. Some of our behaviors prevent us from, from, from getting blessings, all because we don't know how to talk to people. And even though when people talk to us the wrong way, we respond. We go there with them. But because we respond and we don't respond in the kingdom way, guess what? It comes back to bite us. Oh, yeah. Because that supervisor is now saying, okay, because first of all, you don't respect her opinion, supervisor. You're going to give her a piece of your mind. You're going to give him a piece of your mind. Well, the supervisor may say, well, the reason you didn't get that raise, the reason you didn't get that promotion is because yet you, you're, you're not yet ready, able to handle a supervisor's position, you have to work on your people skills. <laughs> Any, anybody know what I'm talking about? You have to work on your people skills. And what that means is that your behavior, your attitude needs some positive adjustments. Many of us need a spiritual transfusion so we can live in a life of, of abundance. We need it. We need for the Lord to come into our lives <laughs> and give us a mind to walk like Yeshua instructed us to walk. Hmm. To talk like he instructed us to talk. To love! Treat everybody right. Righteousness. Most of all, Father, we need self-control. Help us really work on that component. Because many of us have gotten out of control. Especially when we are rubbed the wrong way. Father, help us that when we are rubbed the wrong way, when we are challenged because somebody hit a nerve, they triggered that nerve. Oh, Father, let the Holy Spirit overtake us. At that, when we release anything, huh, we release love. That no matter how people treat us, no matter how they see us, when we respond to them, let it always be out of the spirit of love. Because, Father, we understand that we fight not against flesh and blood, but in spiritual weakness. How do we control when it comes, our well, Father, you already told us, you said, resist it. That means when evil show itself, when you resist, in other words, you ignore, like I see your evil, I ain't paying you no mind. You don't have no power or authority here because I ain't going on that page. Father, we yield our vessels. But not only our vessel, oh Father, but our spirit. That our spirit may reflect, that it may reflect the kingdom. So that's why, Father, we say, living a life of righteousness, treating people right, it will, it will render us the best outcome of any situation that we find ourselves in. I'm going to put it simple this way, Father. You say, oh, it's going to work out for your good. 
Everything work out for the good of them who love. However, oh, him. Father, help us to believe that word. And help us to know that in this race, it's not given to the swift or to the strong, but to them who endure to the end. Help us to endure, Father. Help us to overcome. We thank you for sending this son to be an example to teach us how to measure up to the righteousness of your commandments. That we can overcome this world. But the most important thing, Father, help your people to know and understand that they have to be determined they have to be determined. They have to have determination. You say in your word, you've got the hunger and you have to thirst at the righteousness. So, Father, I pray for my brothers and I pray for my sisters. Father, that they get hungrier, more thirsty, that they may thirst and hunger at the righteousness and pursue it. For such is the kingdom of heaven. You told us in your word. The songwriter put it this way. None but the righteous shall see him. Oh, Father, we know that righteousness, righteous living pleases you. So, Father, we want to be like our big brother. When he was here on this earth, he lived to please you. Help us, Father, that when we wake up in the morning, we wake up with pleasing you on our mind. As we go throughout the day, we pray that we'll be reminded that we're living every moment <laughs> to please you. For we want to find favor in you. We want you to delight in us. And in order for that to happen, we do understand that we have to live a life of righteousness, a life of holiness. In the show of name we pray. I pray that you was blessed by this message. Just remember, just like the physical fruits needs time to grow. For the fruit of the Spirit will not ripen in our lives overnight. You have to be and become a practitioner of righteous living. In other words, you have to continue practicing day by day, day by uh, day, by day, night by night, until you get this thing right. <laughs> like a successful gardener uh, must battle weeds uh, to enjoy the sweet fruit they desire. We must constantly work to rid our lives of the weeds of our old sin natures that want to choke out the work of the Spirit in our lives. So, Father, we pray, and it is our desire to live for you. My brothers and sisters know that this thing is an everyday job. Every day we must practice righteous living. And like I said, after a while, we'll get it right. You'll discover that you'll be a new man, a new woman. 
You look up and you'll, be, you'll say, and you'll notice yourself one day, you say, hmm, I no longer have that urge. I no longer thirst after this. I no longer crave for that. You'd be like, well, how did I do it? It's because every day you put forth an effort. Yeah, there were some times you fail, but you never stop. So my words to you, my brothers and sisters, be a practitioner of righteous living. Practice it every day. And I promise you, you'll get it right. The urgency that we have is that we don't know when or where time will be called on our life and we will no longer exist on this side. So since that is a mystery to us, it behooves us to not to procrastinate, but to get it done. We can't say, oh, we wait till tomorrow. I remember the, the songs by the Winans that was written by Brother Calvin Winans. When the song said, tomorrow I give my life tomorrow. But he said, hey, let's, don't forget about today. For tomorrow may be too late. So I encourage you not to put off for tomorrow. But how about doing this thing today? Blessings. Thank you.